miles of sun-bleached arid desert surrounded by rugged mountains and vegetation adapted for barren existence. A brilliant sun seems to hang endless in a midday attitude, and to venture outdoors is a sunscreen must. An oasis of emerald green is not a mirage, but a well-groomed golf course. This land of contrast is Arizona, where bodies of water are a rare find and boat racing in this hot, parched climate seems totally unlikely, except for a unique spot south of Phoenix, where the whine of the turbines interrupts the desert silence, and the roar of the thunderboats echoes through the valley. The Hydros battled in their first event of the 1995 season today on ESPN Speed World. Unlimited Hydroplane Series from Firebird Lake in Phoenix, Arizona. The Gila River Casino Unlimited Cup. The first of 10 events on the 1995 URC season. Welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. It is sunny, it is hot, and the racing is blistering hot. Hello everyone, I'm Dick Crippen, welcoming you to Firebird Sports Complex, a rather unique sports complex for racing right outside of Phoenix, Arizona. They have Firebird Lake, which is used for the drag racing boats. They have a road course to test Indy cars. They have the Bonder and Driving School right here, and they have a drag strip. It was on that drag strip just a couple of months ago here on Speed World, you saw the counterparts to Smoke and Joe's and a Miss Budweiser at over 300 miles per hour. Well, today, the Miss Budweiser Unlimited Hydroplane and the Smoke and Joe's Unlimited Hydroplane will join others trying to top 200 miles per hour on this water, Firebird Lake. But wait a minute, didn't we say it was a drag racing lake? It is a unique format we're running today, and with that, here's Jim Hendrick. Dick, the key word is elimination. Like any other sport at playoff time, you lose just once, you're out. And that'll happen here today. Eight boats have qualified. And the way they set up competition on these elimination brackets is the way they qualify. That's right, Jim. It's a typical eliminations ladder. The first fastest boat against number eight, the second fastest against number seven, and so on. Eight boats to four boats to two boats. The top qualifier, take a look at him. Chip Hanauer, he ran 147 miles per hour with Mark Tate right behind him at 146. Jim? Unlike other races on the 95 circuit where we put five or six boats abreast, this format does not dictate that. It's a different type of lake. For that story, here's Steve Montgomery. Jim, it's become very obvious to us after watching qualifying and testing. It's a two-boat race course. The question is, are two boats going to fit? Watching qualifying, we saw the fast boats use the entire race course. Way on the outside, on the front and back chutes. The drivers throwing the big boats through the turns, right on the boy line. All that centrifugal force carrying them out to the outside of the race course once again as it tried to tear all the hardware off the boat and throw the driver right through the side of the cockpit. Now the question will be, can a fast boat running on the outside leave room for another boat on the inside? And we're about to find out. This is a never-before-tried format for the unlimited hydroplanes. It is going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot of drama as the day goes on. And we're going to bring it all to you. Our very first matchup is going to put a rookie driver against a wily veteran, one of the winningest drivers around. Here's the rookie, Tom Hendley. Who's he going to face? None other than Chip Hanauer. We'll have all the action coming up next on Speed. Chip Hanauer aboard the Miss Budweiser going out on the Firebird Lake. This is a brand new boat, and the phone bill for the Miss Budweiser camp's got to be a little higher than normal this week. A little earlier, Steve Montgomery found out why. One familiar face not with us this weekend, Budweiser crew chief Ronnie Brown. He's back in Seattle recovering from surgery. He's actually in the Budweiser shop in a hospital bed. But he's in touch with the Budweiser crew constantly. They are feeding him information after every run. The stuff from their computer goes into Ron's computer. He's making many of the decisions that will affect the Budweiser team here today. 
Our first matchup of the day, the Miss Budweiser versus Abby and Renegade. Now we ask both of these drivers about running on this shorter than usual course. It's racing Greyhound buses on a go-kart track and uh, it makes it tough for the drivers, but uh, if I was a fan, I'd pay money to see Greyhound buses race on a go-kart track. Well, I think it'll be, it'll be a difficult task. There's not a whole lot of room out there, but I do feel fortunate myself that I'm going into the corner with someone like Chip Tanauer next to me. There's the start of the first matchup race of the day. Chip Tanauer closest to you, and the Miss Budweiser on the outside takes the lead. High atop the course in a helicopter at every race, Chief Referee Mike Noonan is looking down with a bird's eye view. He wants to make sure the boats stay right on their course, in their groove. Jim Hendrick talked to him earlier. All the guys know the rules. All the guys have been on the race course. Uh, they all grew up driving on courses like this. This is where they got their experience on small courses. So uh, they respect each other. They know what the rules are. And it's just a matter of giving a little courtesy and give plenty of room to the guy next to you. We should point out this is the first time this weekend that two boats have been on this course together, so we really have an unknown commodity there. Steve, what's it look like from your vantage point? Well, Dick, we had everybody holding their breath as the two boats went into the turn. They made it just fine. We might point out that the fast qualifier in most of our races chooses to run on the inside. An hour, as we probably will see throughout the day, wanted to go outside, and that's definitely, Dick, where the fast lane is going to be. And fast he is. The best Budweiser coming around. This was the fastest qualifier in the field of boats that we have here today. Over 147 miles per hour on this very tight course. Bounces a little bit, coming out of the turn, back into the groove as she comes down, finally around the beaches, and then into the straightaway, down toward the start-finish line. At the end of the second lap, the Zodiac Sports Watch's lap time is 136 miles per hour. Dick, that's a very fast speed on a course this size. And here's something we don't see on the bigger courses we race on across the country. The boats are actually catching up with their own wakes. There will be no such thing as a smooth racetrack out here today. And we want to give some credit to Tom Henley, the rookie driver who's out here doing a good job holding in on all that slop out there, too, because there's a lot of it going to the inside. Here comes the run to the finish line, Chip Hanauer setting the pace out here today on Fireburn Lake. Chip Hanauer takes the checkered flag, our first win of the day. So Chip Hanauer with 400 points, and he advances into the next round, while Tom Henley, who comes into the same dock they're launching the T-plus from, gets 300 points. However, he'll go on the trailer for the rest of the day. Let's go down to the pits and Steve Montgomery. Chip, great job, but the question is, how hard was it to leave room for Tom on the inside? Wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. Um, I'm surprised. I think it's going to be okay for two boats. How about when it's Mark Tate or Dave Vilwak? I can't leave him so much room. I can't be um, Santa Claus. I was Santa Claus. You know, I was Tom's first first heat ever in an unlimited hydroplane. And, you know, coming here and under these tight situations, um, I wanted to make it as easy as I could for him. But, no, Mark, uh, Mark's no rookie. He, uh, he doesn't get so much room. Scott Pierce and Steve David in the next round of competition. Steve David already has had an interesting weekend. We'll tell you why in a moment. Back at Firebird Lake, Dick Crippen along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick as two boats. Scott Pierce in the Ron Jones Marine Entry and Steve David in the T-plus engine treatment are on the course warming up for the next round. Steve, it's been a rather interesting weekend so far for Steve David. That's right, Dick. We talked about how the small, tight race course puts tremendous hydraulic pressure on the boat's hardware. Earlier in qualifying, this was Steve David going into the turn. The skid fin breaks a bolt. It's loose now. The boat is out of control, and Steve literally parks it on the beach. And probably what saved the boat from serious damage was the fact that Steve saw what was happening and shut down the turbine. But look at this view. This is the view Steve had at this point right here. The boat is out of attitude. You can see the tilt on the horizon. And right here, Dick, is a view out the front window that a boat racer never wants to see. It's called terra firma land. Well, it was an amazingly smooth trip over that land for this boat. But what happened to the boat, we asked Steve David. That turnbuckle snapped at the apex of the turn, and that allowed the boat to ride up on the turn fin and, and just keep going to the shoreline. The, the guys built a terrific boat, uh, the testimony that's still on one piece, and I have every confidence to get it fixed, and, and we'll get around this race course again. This is the scene yesterday, and now it's going to be Steve David back out in the T-plus. He qualified the boat fourth. There was very minor damage to it. He faces Scott Pierce, Scott driving the Ron Jones Marine entry. It's going to be Stephen David on the outside. 
Scott Pierce in a virtually new race boat, Dick. They barely had time to set this up for big courses, let alone this tight one. We'll see how he does now on the inside. You might wonder if that beaching had any effect at all on Stephen David. Well, it sure doesn't look like it. He's keeping his speed very high on the outside of the course. As Steve pointed out earlier, many times on the bigger courses, it's the inside boat with the advantage. This time, it looks like, again, as in the case of the first matchup with the Miss Budweiser, the outside boat is the boat running fastest. Here's the view again. This is the way it's supposed to look out the front of the team bus when he's on the water. And Dick, we might point out the outside lane here is actually smaller than our inside lane is on the two and two and a half mile horses. And I've wondered about it a little bit because they're coming right down by the grandstands. Normally they don't see the spectators very clearly, but here they are right next to them in that outside lane. And vice versa, the spectators here are getting the closest look at unlimited hydroplanes that I've ever seen. Right now, all eyes are on the T-plus with Stephen David, the boat that was on the beach yesterday and had minor damage to it. They fixed the skid fin, and it's back in the lead this time, but there is a problem with Scott Pierce. Scott had given it a good run on the inside, Dick. Now he may have some gremlins in the engine room. No gremlins for T plus. Steve David coming down for the white flag, signifying one more lap to go, and his lap time from Zodiac 123 miles per hour. Very tight course as these boats go into the turn. You'll notice he kind of slides across the water. The skid fin that we've been talking about so much is the only thing holding him in there, and it doesn't look good for the Ron Jones Marine entry. Here is Scott still running. We should mention that that 123 mile an hour speed is very fast for this race course. We were here 20 years ago, and our qualifying speeds were 100 to 105. That's right. So that shows you the refinement on these boats as Steve David comes around to take round two. He is going to complete the beach turn where he went up on the beach yesterday. This time, no problem for the boat. T-plus is coming home for the checkered flag. Steve David will advance now to the next round with 400 points. Meanwhile, nothing but problems for Scott Pierce. We're sad to say it doesn't look like he's going to finish. Here we see Scott coasting to a stop. We'll show you where he got in trouble for the first time. This is the second turn of the first lap, and you see that Steve David has come through the turn, stirred up the water, and as Scott comes through there, he just can't find smooth water to race on. That's hard on equipment. All right, and in lap two, out of turn number one, again, we watch the attitude of the boat, and he starts hitting the slop. It looks like he's clear, but then all of a sudden he starts hitting into it, and, and obviously it's a very rough ride. Watch right here. He actually Actually takes waves over the bow of the boat. There he goes, and boy, you get into that, and that boat is not going to fly on top of the water at that point. Now, it also might be, this is, as we said, a salt water course, and we could have some problems. Let's go down to the dock. Thanks. Steve, for one brief moment, you were behind. <laughs> well, I was going to lap him, is that it? <laughs> no, in the first turn, you both got through there side by side very nicely. Yeah, it was really important, I think, for both Scott and I to get through there. I got the most respect in the world for Scotty, and I just want to get through safe and clean and then, and then race, and uh, that's what we did. And boy, what a testament to the T-plus engine treatment of my crew to get this thing back together after I destroyed it yesterday on the beach. So this is a redemption for me, and thanks to my crew. You kept it in the water all the way. The commissioner walked by and said, I think we could run three boats. Yeah, the commissioner is uh, on some kind of medication, maybe. <laughs> I don't think we'll try three boats, but take a look at this great facility here at Firebird Lake. There's the unlimited pits. We'll be back to more racing in a moment. The 1995 Gila River Casino Unlimited Challenge on Firebird Lake outside of Phoenix, Arizona, as the Smokin' Joes takes to the course for a warm-up lap for the next match race competition. Standing on the sidelines, watching from the pits, Smokin' Joes owner Steve Woomer on the right, and R.J. Reynolds team Wayne Robertson look on. Those two join the CEO of R.J. Reynolds Company, Jim Johnson, at the Bondurant Driving School here at Firebird Lake earlier this week. Now, the day began, as it always begins in the driving schools, a little bit of classroom work. They've got to look over the course, and they learn about apex driving and all this kind of thing. Then they take a short tour of the schools, and they know where they're going. They learn some of the disciplines of the school, and who, who, who wouldn't like to climb aboard that? Well, Jim Johnson at least got to sit in the car. Now, not everyone could keep their minds on the garage. You can see there Steve Wilmer checking out the rooster tails. 
Anyway, a little hands-on work on the course, and they were not the only ones who got the opportunity to drive these cars. My experience in the Bond and Rock School was the main purpose was to learn how to hit my apexes properly, learn what type of technology they had on the race course, and what I could pick up from them and utilize in the race boat. Today, I understand that Mr. Woomer, Mr. T. Wayne Robinson, and Mr. Jim Johnson from R.J. Reynolds all went through the Bondurant School. I haven't yet to talk to them yet, but I think they'll have more of an understanding of what I'm talking about when I come back to the beach in the race boat now. I'm sure they learned about braking, um, apexes, how to anticipate a corner, how to use their references on the race course, and I think we can uh, communicate a little better on, on those types of bases. Well, we congratulate all of our graduates of the Bondurant School of Racing. Steve Woomer getting out of his car there along with the executives of R.J. Reynolds. And now we look at the race course today. And you can see the yellow boat, Smoking Joe's on the outside of the course. That's Mark Tate. And driving on the inside of the course will be the Kendall Racing Boat driven by Mitch Evans. And as they take the start, it is the yellow and blue boat on the outside to the left of your screen holding even with the inside boat and let's see how they come out of the turn he slingshots past mitch evans mitch evans in the red and white boat on the inside of the course mitch evans has piston power dick his boat's about a thousand pounds heavier you can bet he'd like to be on the outside but i thought he did a good job of getting through that turn he certainly did inside the spoken joe's now the number two qualifier in our field it's a little bit of roughness there some of the wake left over and now he continues on a straight shot you can see the grandstand off to his right they get very close to it as we mentioned before now it looks like mitch evans has gone a little to the outside well he's already far enough back dick that he doesn't have to worry about the rooster tail overlapping and go to the outside and you see here the apex of the turn that mark uh, tate talked about he is clear on the inside when he reaches the apex he's using the whole race course 131 miles per hour for mark tate on the second lap he has one lap to go for a victory here dick Mark Tate was the second fastest qualifier. Mitch Evans was the seventh fastest qualifier. That's the way the ladder works out. And here comes Mark Tate down now for the checkered flag. He makes his final turn onto the front straightaway. Comes down by the grandstand. Every hand is up, giving him a great big wave of congratulations. And the checkered flag goes out to Smokin' Joe's Mark Tate. 400 points will go to Mark Tate. 300 points to Mitch Evans. Mitch fighting it around the turn just a little bit. Now we see Mark is heading back into the pit area. You see the crane right straight ahead of him. Shuts down that big turbine engine and just lets the boat glide into the dock. We've got a lot more racing to go, more match racing. Ken Muscatel getting ready here. What is this? The dipping of the feet? Maybe that's for good luck. Or maybe it's just to get the sand off his feet. I don't know. But whichever one, he'll get aboard his boat. Meanwhile, Steve is ready with a winner. Mark, first question, the first turn. Any problem leaving room? Oh, I thought I left plenty of room. I know I think there's plenty of room out there for the two boats. And uh, as the day goes on and the heats will get tighter, you know, we'll, we'll actually see what room there is out there. Did I see you doing some testing on the inside? Uh, I was tightening up my line a little bit, checking how the boat was going to hit in the rough water, and just kind of playing it easy and learning things as the day goes on. And I think that's what I'm going to need to do if we, if we hope to make it down to the final. The last match race of round one. Bring it up. This is the new Gila River Casino with inside of the Firebird Complex here on the Gila River Indian Reservation. Nearly completed by race weekend, we're going to miss the grand opening by day. As our last two boats of the first round head on to Firebird Lake. Earlier, Dick took a look at the unlimited lights making their debut here at Firebird. 468 cubic inches of raw power. It could be Chrysler, Chevrolet, Pontiac, you name it. If you've heard about it, you could use one of those engines in here if it's 468 cubic inches. The boat is 22 feet long. One of the things it has on it on the front, the canard wings that we talk about in the unlimited hydroplanes, those are electric. These are hydraulic, still operated by the foot. This is interesting. This is adjustable between races. This is the skid fin that we've been talking about so much with the Unlimiteds today. They can actually make this course adjustable. Move it in, move it out, tilt it, whatever they have to do. That's a very new invention, and it's going to be interesting to watch how it develops. They've also got one other thing. On the back of the boat, you have the strut holding onto the propeller. You want to pitch it a little bit differently. Inside the boat, you can now adjust the strut. That's another new innovation. And the driver of this boat will be familiar to you if you've watched Unlimited Hydroplane Racing for any time at all, Jim Cropfeld. Jim, last time we saw you, you were aboard the Miss Budweiser, and then you retired. 
Well, we, we kind of retired and got out of the sport for a while and then uh, went home and did some work and played around and uh, found out that it wasn't too exciting and we weren't having much fun on the weekend, so uh, decided we uh, were going to go boat racing, so here we are. Jim, one thing, the difference between driving those big hulking unlimited hydroplanes at 200 miles an hour as compared to driving one of these smaller boats. Well, Dick, actually, uh, at the moment, there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference. Uh, naturally, we're about 40 mile an hour slower in the straightaways, but we have a boat that's quite a bit smaller, too. So uh, the sensation of speed is still there. Uh, the only thing that I really notice a lot of difference uh, would be the acceleration. We just don't quite have the uh, ump off the turns, but we have a new boat, and uh, we'll work that out, too. And here's a boat that's been doing very well so far this weekend. Pico's American Dream, driven by Dave Vilwak on the left of your screen there. Dave, a very experienced driver in all forms of hydroplane racing. He'll be matched up against Ken Muscatel. Ken on the inside of the course in the red and yellow boat. And as they take the start, it is going to be the red, white, and blue, mostly blue and white boat of Pico's American Dream. Seem to be trailing as they came into the turn, but watch him as he comes out and he slingshots past Ken Muscatel. Dave Vilwak doing a nice job of leaving plenty of room for the doctor. Ken Muscatel is a clinical psychologist from Seattle, and uh, he thought he might need some of his own care here after trying to qualify this boat and spinning it a couple of times on his qualifying attempts. So far, he seems to be handling it very well, and he's got some pretty clean water on the inside because Vilwak is staying very, very far to the outside. So far, Ken Muscatel hasn't had any big problems here in competition, doing a nice job of running on the inside. This was just a few minutes ago, Dick, during a warm-up lap. Look what happened to the doctor. He did a 270. No damage to the boat, but that's what can happen when you're trying to run these tight turns on the inside. And you know that has to be on his mind as he goes around that same turn moments later. But Dr. Ken Muscatel so far holding the boat in second place on this run. As you can see, about a quarter of a lap behind the leader. Now he starts hitting a little bit of slop, and he's got to be careful because that boat tends to get extremely light. And if he loses his contact with the water, that's when he's going to spin around like that. Dave Vilwak doing a good job out there. Lap number two for him, down about 10 miles an hour from his first lap. But as you can see by the Zodiac Sports Watch lap speed, 113 miles per hour. He is not going to rip up equipment if he doesn't have to. Ever since mid-season last year, the Pico's American Dream has been one of the hot boats on the circuit. We expect to see Dave uh, save some of that speed for later in the day. Well, he gets plenty of speed as he comes into his final turns here on Firebird Lake. The crowd now getting ready to welcome him home with a checkered flag as he will move on with 400 points. Dave Vilwak has got to be happy with the performance of this boat. He takes the checkered flag, winning the final race of round number one. Ken Muscatel, more problems. Ken is out of power. He is coasting toward the shore, and he is going to end this heat on the beach. So he will not finish the race. Here's your final four. The Miss Bud will take on T+. Plus. Pico's American Dream will take on Smoking Joe's. Now let's you and I take a moment out here for the Rancho Suspension Performance Corner with Mark Tate. We're racing on Firebird Lake this week, and we've had to make numerous changes to the Smoking Joe Unlimited Hydroplane. We've literally made changes on the boat from the very front of the boat to the very rear. And one of the first things that we've changed on the boat this week is the front canard wings. We have lowered the front canard wings to generate as much funnel lift as we can in the boat. The second item that we've changed on the Smoke and Joe Unlimited Hydroplane is the primaries. We've put more angle of attack into the primary of the Sponson. That's the main running surface. And again, that generates more lift in the boat. The third thing that we have changed is this. This is called the skid fin. This is what the boat hooks up on going around the corner. We've put more canter, more angle into this fin, and that allows the boat to pull harder downward as we're going through these tight radius corners. The final thing that we have changed on the unlimited hydroplane has been the rear wing. We have changed the angle of the rear wing to generate more lift coming off the corner to help our acceleration and so we can carry more boat speed at the end of the straightway. And that's Ben Rancho's Performance Corner. Thank you very much, Mark, as Ken Muscatel across Firebird Lake looks over the possible damage to his boat. Dave Vilwa congratulating his crew as he readies for the final four next. The Gila River Casino Unlimited Cup is down to the final four. It will be the Miss T Plus and the Miss Budweiser, which is a virtually new boat, as Dick Crippen discovered earlier. This is the front nose of the Miss Budweiser. Looks like just about all the other hydroplanes here, but here's the wing, and it's solid. You know why? Because look what's up front. 
This is the movable wing, and this particular one goes all the way across, and it's unbroken by the nose of the hydroplane. It's something they found out in the wind tunnels. They're not saying an awful lot about the effect of it, but I will tell you this. Chip Hanauer says it's a lot more reactive. Well, that's logical. It would be. There's a lot more surface area. Why did they come up with the idea? They're trying to stop the boat from going over. You remember the accidents Miss Budweiser's had in the past? They hope this will prevent it. The T-plus engine treatment, the Budweiser's opponent this round, had some skid fin problems earlier in the weekend. I asked Jim Harvey to talk about changes he's made to this boat. This is the tightest turn we'll experience in the year. Uh, and what happens is these drivers are going down the straightaways at 195 miles an hour, and they hit the turn, all the load and the forces are on this blade. And it takes about a half a million pounds of load against this blade, and one of the rods broke loose, and the boat lost control. And the good news is you get through this race and your hardware won't be tested again like this all season. No, but it'll also be a lot stronger from here on out, too. As we look at this race with the Miss Budweiser on the outside and the T-plus on the inside, the red boat is the Miss Budweiser. There you inside the yellow and black T-plus. Look at the Miss Budweiser out of the cockpit to the right. You can see that huge rooster tail. And we must point out that a driver trailing the rooster tail has got to be aware of that tail because it's like seven tons of water. The boat will actually ride up on it. This time, he was far enough back to get through it. I was just going to say that Steve David was doing by far the best job we've seen today of running on the inside. You saw the boat slide out through the rooster tail of this Budweiser. That puts him firmly back in second place. Bernie Little watching from high atop his little stand by the Miss Budweiser pit as he watches his boat take a command over the T-plus. That boat is holding beautifully on the water. Very solid. Fishtail by the T-plus. Looked like Steve David hooked it just a little bit, Nick. Back there running in the slot behind Miss Budweiser. Here's that spectacular view once again as Steve David follows Chip Hanauer into the turn. And it looks like he's gotten right into the trail of the rooster tail because he is trying to get that smooth water and gain a little speed. He stayed right on track with Chip Hanauer's boat. Actually true, just like in water skiing, sometimes the smoothest water is right behind the boat in front of him. Well, the boat in front, in this case, is hitting pretty smooth water. The best Budweiser, the Zodiac lap speeds. Let's take a look at both boats. 137 miles per hour for the Miss Budweiser, 120 miles per hour for the T-Plus. And as you can see, that 120 is moving plenty fast across this point. Chip Hanauer brings Bernie Little's Miss Budweiser down the front straightaway and takes the checkered flag. And as he does, he adds another 400 points on the day. Let's look at the Fruit of the Loom. Cumulative points on this day at Firebird Lake. Miss Budweiser with 800 points. Miss T-Plus at 700. Smoke and Joe's and Pico's American Dream at 400 each. Smoke and Joe's now being lowered into the water. Let's talk to a winner, Chip Hanauer. Chip, virtually a brand new boat. A shakedown cruise going pretty well here. Yeah, better than I would have hoped. You know, coming to a course like this, which is so different, and then coming with a boat that's never been tried, I was pretty nervous, but I don't think I could ask for more. One more heat. One more heat. That's the one that um, puts uh, shoes on the baby and groceries on the table. So uh, I hope we can do well. And we'll be back with more racing from Firebird Lake in just a moment. Back at Firebird Lake, the criminal along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick, and we are off and running in the final race of our final four. Pico's American Dream, the blue and white boat against Smokin' Joe's, the blue and yellow boat, and look at Smokin' Joe's come by as Philwalk handles heavy on the inside. As he comes out of the turn, Smokin' Joe's, Mark Tate has taken a lead, but Dave Philwalk is not giving him room. And at this point, if indeed, Smokin' Joe's wanted to come to the inside. He might have a problem. He might not have the distance away from the second place boat to cut in without affecting the rooster tail. So they've got to be careful. He knows that Dave Vilwak is a real lead foot back there behind him. There you still see the blue boat in the picture. Best race we've had so far today. But the Smokin' Joe's has almost established that overlap. And there you see the interval between the two boats. 1.51 seconds, that's all there is to it. Remember, these boats are going the length of a football field in about one second's time, so there's very little distance between these two boats. 
as we look again at the speeds of these boats, they're holding fairly steady. Well, actually, Billwalk has dropped off just a little bit. Spoken Joe's at 135, according to our Zodiac sports watches, and Billwalk now at 107. There you see the view Marquette has on the grandstand one by on the right. Billwalk now has dropped back a bit. It looks to be Tate's race, but Billwalk definitely gave him a run on the inside. He sure did handle that boat, and I can tell you, Billwalk did not want the inside. He had told me before he knows where the fast course is, and it is on the outside, but he didn't have a choice. This time, it was Smoking Joe's that got the lane choice. He took the fast one, and that's the outside. He is handling beautifully. That boat is really handling better than we've seen it in a while. Thinking already about his potential final heat matchup with his old rival, Chip Hanau. Mark Tate taking a little time now to look at different parts of the race course, Dick. Here we see him running right on the blue line. And the reason for that is because he knows that Chip Hanauer is going to get the lane choice in the final race and probably will go to the outside. There's the checkered flag. And the winner with another 400 points will be Smokin' Joe. So the matchup is clear at this point. The two boats with 800 points, the Miss Budweiser and the Smokin' Joe's, will go head to head. He goes to T plus a battle for third. Now we've got a great schedule coming up. The first weekend of June will be the Gold Cup in Detroit. A new site, Smithville Lake in Kansas City, Missouri. Two weekends later, we'll finish out here in Evansville. We'll start July and go to the West Coast at the end of July. Finish it out in Seattle, San Diego, and Honolulu. Let's talk to another winner. Mark, you had some speed with you that time. Any problem putting him away? Well, you know, he, he had a little jump on me at the start. And we pulled him down into the first turn and made him hold his lane through there and looked like he hooked a little bit and after that point we kind of put the race away you know all i can say is the smoke and joe boats working really well i got to commend my crew though you know we broke a propeller here earlier in the week and these guys worked around the clock one day and put it back together and gave me a great race boat steve Wilmer, you haven't lost a race all season <laughs> yeah well let's hope that's true after the next one so uh no the smoke and joe is running real good today and uh, we're all excited about the final well, as they say in boat racing, it's a fresh bullet for the Miss Budweiser. A brand new turbine is being installed. We'll be back with the finals in a moment. Back at Firebird Lake, these youngsters sure know how to do some unlimited hydroplane racing. Uh-oh, I think they both better check their boats. Well, they do that. Let's us check some other boats. The unlimited lights are back out on the course, and this will be their final heat. We're in a warm-up lap right now. Steve, one of the great things about these boats for the fans is they use automobile engines so they can associate with them like they can in NASCAR. They also fit on this race course a lot better, Dick. We're going to have four boats in the front line, a trailer back behind them as they are forming up now to go around and make the start for our final heat. I think a lot of the unlimited drivers are watching from the pitch just to see what four boats look like side by side coming down here. The man on the outside that's going to have to watch out for the beach is none other than the blockbuster video boat driven by Mike Mamano out of New York State, owned by Alan Vortemeyer. And as they come around, he's got plenty of room. It looks like everybody's pulled in tight. We should get the green flag for go on this one. Let's see if we do. And there it is. They're off and running, and it looks like it's going to be a battle. Pegasus on the inside. And now Mamano tries to get a real run on the outside. Now, this is like when we race the Unlimiteds, and we always talk about the outside groove having to go further on that track so that that boat has to drive a little bit faster. You can see how they evened up as they came through the turn. Very tight, but now they're almost nose to nose on the line as they come around. Great first turn, Dick. They actually came through there all four boats side by side. You see Pegasus on the inside. Look how loose he's running that boat to keep it at top speed. Next to him in the silver boat, that's Dave Bender in the play and pay. This boat has come a long ways. Last year was a development year for the Bender family. This year they have been the fastest boat in the Unlimited Lights so far. So far in this race, he is leading the blockbuster video in second place and back in third place, Pegasus Mark Weber. But Weber looks like he's moved up on the inside and may take it. You can see the other boat he's battling far to his left. Pegasus, very light. They call that Sponson walking. They tiptoe from Sponson to Sponson. These boats a lot lighter. One of the names that did not make the final field, we're sorry to say, is Jim Cropfeld, best known for his ride among this crowd in the unlimited Miss Budweiser. But they had some problems with the boat. It's brand new. It was built by Scott Cropfeld, who is Jimmy's son. They will be back on this course. We have the finish coming up. Let's take a look at it now. Pegasus is battling for second, but here's your winner coming across number 38. That's Dave Bender in the play and pay, a Pontiac engine boat. 
great racing by the Unlimited Rights. If you would like to join the URC, the Unlimited Racing Commission Winner's Circle, just call the number on your screen because if you join right now, not only will you get the media guide and some other goodies, you'll get the Diamond P video, Thunderboats. Call the 800 number on your screen right now. As the lights head back into the pits, the heavies leave the pits. We have the race for third coming up, but first, let's go to the pits. And Steve Montgomery is with the winner of the Unlimited Lights, Dave Bender. Guys, our first ever champion in the Unlimited Lights, Dave Bender. The silver boat, nobody got in front of you all weekend. No, we uh, won three straight, and uh, like uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, we've been working at it now for about four years, and the boat's finally starting to come together, so it's been a long, hard road to get here. Now it is the battle for third place in the Unlimited Hydroplanes. We're looking out the canopy of the T-plus. That boat will be on the inside, the yellow and black boat. The blue boat with the white trim is Pico's American Dream, Dave Vilwak. There's the flag, and there's the start. This is a battle, and they are even Steven going down into the first turn. Usually the boat on the outside has the advantage. Let's see if that's true. Steve David flies high up on the skid fin, manages to hold the lead through turn number one and two, and I think that's the first time today the inside boat has held the lead coming out of the turn. By, by far the best job any driver has done all day, Dick, of getting through that turn on the inside. Steve David kept his boat speed up. We've seen the guy on the inside just about have to park it to get around that turn. Right now, our leader is on the inside for the first time. And I think we're going to have to keep an eye on that boat because Dave Vilwak is putting the pressure on him, and I noticed that the T-plus keeps going up just a little bit on his sponsor. 1.1 second, the Zodiac interval time by these two boats. Wow, this is the best racing we've seen all day, but see how the boat kind of tips over onto its right as that skid fin on the left grabs into the water. He's got to keep very attuned to the amount of air that's passing underneath his boat. There's the view out the front window of Steve David's boat. Nobody in front of him in that picture, but now you see Vilwak moving up a bit on the outside as an anxious Jim Harvey, the owner of the black and yellow boat watches. He's coming through the turn again, scraping off a little bit of speed, and Vilwak may have got around him on the outside. Now the T-plus hooks a little bit. He's lost some speed there, Nick. And as the T-plus gets back up on play, now you can see the rooster tail from the Pico's American Dream, Dave Vilwak. He has taken full advantage of the slight loss of speed because of that hooking action of the T-plus. There you can see Steve Davids right back on it, trying to chip away again at the leader. He is averaging 129 miles per hour in Pico's American Dream. The interval now between first and second is 2.5 seconds. That turn where the T-plus engine treatment hooked just a bit on the inside cost Steve David about three seconds. And now you see him in pursuit of Dave Vilwak. And it looks like Dave Vilwak on the home stretch cut it in just a little bit to get more into the interior of the course. There's the checkered flag. Third place on the day will go to Pico's American Dream. The happy crew down in the pit area, no question about it. The time was cost by the T-plus as he hooked into that turn, and that is where the problem was. You can see as he came around the turn, watch the inside boat, yellow and black. See, he kind of fishtails it there. Then you can see the Sponson dig. Now he's almost coming across the course. He finally straightens it out. That little tiny variance in the groove was enough to cost him time. Here it is from inside the boat. Now watch the things dead ahead as the boat kind of loses its groove. You can see the water break up over the front of it. There you can see the leader taking it over in the right. Let's go down to Steve in the winner's pit area. Well, David, normally when you got to catch somebody, you try to get to the inside. Here, the outside worked okay. Yeah, it worked okay. You know, we tried to take a slug at that yellow boat over there, and we had to take a slug at this yellow boat here from the uh, outside, and it worked out for us, you know. Like I say again, Wisney family, progressive tool. They got us here, and they got us a really competitive boat, and I think we put on a good show in this little bit different format than what we see in other programs, but we're having a great time. The crew's doing a great job, and we just couldn't be happier about the outcome, even though we've, we've just got third place. We'd like to win, but as it goes down, you know, for our first race, I think we had a great, great outing for everybody here. Dave Vilwak and Pico's American Dream gets third place on the day. First place, that will be decided next. The two fastest qualifiers of the day, Miss Budweiser and Smokin' Joe's, next.
Firebird Lake outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Dick Griffin along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick as we look at the Miss Budweiser, the fastest qualifier on the weekend. Going out onto the course, we want to talk to the owners of the two final boats. Let's talk first with Bernie Little. Hasn't worked out too bad not having the crew chief here. Oh, well, everything that we've done here today uh, goes back to Ronnie Brown. Ronnie uh, engineered this boat, and believe me, he's not here physically, but he certainly is here, and he's on that phone every minute of the day. He's telling us what to do, and we're doing it. Starting your 33rd year in Unlimiteds, and you're in another final heat. Yeah, we sure are, and uh, thanks to Ronnie and the Miss Budweiser crew that uh, they built us a great boat. Chip is mighty happy with it, so uh, we hope we'll win today, but we may and we may not, but we'll be trying. Here's the boat that is competition for him, the Smokin' Joes. Mark Tate is aboard that boat. The man who has been watching it from the pit area all day long with the R.J. Reynolds folks is none other than Steve Woolmer. Steve, the good news is you're in the final heat, but you're on the inside. Well, the inside's been a little rough today. I think if we can get a little jump on the start with the Smokin' Joes and uh, push Budweiser a little bit into that first corner and get through there first, I think we've got a good shot at it. Uh, you know, it's down to the two best boats going for it here, and uh, I think the Smokin' Joe will be right there. We're in the warm-up lap now for the finals as you look down on Firebird Lake and the Firebird Complex. Smokin' Joe's on the inside. Miss Budweiser on the outside. Look at that shot. Great shot as Mark Tate comes up. Look how close he is to Chip Hanauer and the Miss Budweiser on the outside. I think they were probably just uh, tapping sponsors to wish each other well or something along that line. They didn't literally touch, but I know both of these drivers have tremendous respect for each other. Now we're going to see if these two boats will match out in this literal drag race for the finals here at Firebird Lake. And we come down, there's the green flag. Miss Budweiser trying to establish dominance right off the bat. You can see Smokin' Joe's just on the inside of that crystal tail. Now look at the difference in the ride of the boat as he heads into the turn, riding on the skid fin, back out onto the straightaway again, and the Miss Budweiser is leading. Tremendous shot, showed you Mark Tate doing a great job of holding his boat on the inside line, but the outside is still the fast way around, and it's going to be hard, Nick, for him to catch Chip Hanauer. He's got it hooked up, and the Miss Budweiser has been, let's admit it, the best boat here this weekend. Oh, boy, did the Smoking Joe ever take a couple of porpoise jumps there, and he had to go through the rooster tail of what was left of it, and it looked like he may have lost a lot of power as he came out of that turn. No problem at all. An absolutely perfect view of how a hydroplane should ride as we look at the Miss Budweiser. Chip Hanauer just doing a magnificent job. And you see the view out the front window of the Smoking Joe's. Mark Tate can see Chip Hanauer way off to his left, but he's almost a half a lap ahead now. He can only hope that he can chip away at that speed the best he can do because the interval is getting wider as Chip Hanauer does a great job taking full advantage. The interval now at eight seconds between first and second place according to our Zodiac sports watches. There you see second place, the Smokin' Joes. Again, Mark Tate doing a very good job of driving. He lost a little bit. You can't make any sort of an error out here. The boat slipped out on him a little bit and it cost him time. We hear a little more compressor stalling now out of the Smokin' Joes as Mark Tate came by the grandstand. Apparently, Dick, he loaded up that engine just a bit. It's not healthy. He might not have been able to catch Chip Hanauer anyway. It has been a Budweiser day here in Phoenix. Still leading the race and still doing a great job, giving us some beautiful shots with our cameras around the course to miss Budweiser. We're coming up on the finish of the race. Now let's talk about average speed. Miss Budweiser ended about 136 miles per hour. The average speed for the Smokin' Joes at 127. Still very, very respectable, but not fast enough to catch the Miss Budweiser. And now let's take a look as the Miss Budweiser comes past the grandstand for the last time. Miss Budweiser, the checkered flag. Chip Hanauer has done it. A brand new boat. Second place will go to the Smokin' Joes. Chip Hanauer, I'm sure, is making Ronnie Brown in that hospital bed feel awfully good at this hour as he hears that the Miss Budweiser will win the first competition of the new year on the unlimited hydroplane schedule. Chip Hanauer has slowed, I haven't seen this before, he has slowed down right in front of the grandstand. He turned on his strobe light, 
open the cockpit, <laughs> and he is waving at the fans as he heads back to the pit area. Let's take a look at the replay of what happened to Smoking Joe's. You see Mark Tate on the inside as the skid fin. Cannot find water to hang on to. He skips out into the rooster tail of Miss Budweiser. Fortunately, he got the after tail, if you will, so it wasn't real heavy water. The boats have been known to ride up on those rooster tails, but in this case, he crossed over the waves, and he did take the spray across the windshield and such, but it was just enough to take off the edge on the speed. Well, let's go down to the winner's dock and join the celebration. Are we going to see something new here with the uh, victory lap? I like well, it. Well, <laughs> it's fun. It's close enough that it was nice to be able to stop and actually look at the fans in the eye. I can, you know, I could actually recognize people. Can we race on this lake, Chip? Um, I think this is the most fantastic hydroplane course in the history of the world. Right? Yeah! <laughs> Bernie, this is one for the engineers. Oh, it truly is. And uh, I, not, never in my 32-year history do I remember a new boat coming out and taking a first victory. And uh, we owe this to Ronnie Brown and my crew. They did an outstanding job. They give Chip a boat that'll win, and Chip gives them a victory. I'm, I'm real optimistic for the season. You know, anytime you start with a new boat, there's a huge question mark, and uh, I think this is going to be a great boat, um, not just for this unique course, but for the whole season. And thanks, Ronnie. I'm sorry you weren't here, and this is your victory. This is your boat. This is your team, and uh, it's a credit to your management ability that, that we could do this. Thanks, bud. Lots That's of celebrating it. still to go for the Miss Budweiser yeah. crew with the championship today. Second place went off to Mark Tate in the Smoking Joes. He's standing by with Jim Henry. Mark, what happened out there the last sheet? Looked, you sound like a little burble in the engine. Well, we were compression sawing because we were deaccelerating so hard, but, uh, you know, that really wasn't the problem. I feel that the problem was the start, and I want to meet with the referees. The first time around, I was running exactly 120 mile an hour. I got the computer sheets here, and I'm going to show them. And I think it's very poor that they aborted that start. Well, I thought that the outside boat was supposed to be the pace boat. He wasn't up on the line with you. It doesn't matter. He's supposed to run 120. I'm on the inside. It's a hazardous. It's very tight out there. At one point, I was going 58 mile an hour in a corner. This computer sheet will show it. I want to meet with the referees and show them that. It's the responsibility of that outside guy to run 120. And if I'm running 120 and he can't stay up, there is a, a rule in the rule book that if the pace is at 120 and a guy can't stay up to the pace, they'll start without him. It's his responsibility to get to that boat speed. Now, you're defending champion of the next race at Gold Cup time back in your hometown, Detroit. I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, we feel that the, the boat was running extremely well here. We're, we're, we're very pleased with where we're at so far this year. Yeah, we got a second place. We're 100 points out for the championship, and, and uh, the Gold Cup's a big race. And I seem to have our whole team, the Smoker Joe team, uh, has great success in Detroit, and we're looking forward to getting home. That'll be the next stop for us the first weekend in June. O'Doul's presents the Eagle Snacks. High points. And as you can see, after one day of racing, the competition, Miss Budweiser at 12.40, Smoke and Joe's 11.30. Then we follow down to the Pico's American Dream, T-plus engine treatment, and Kendall Oil. It has been a great day of racing. Dick Griffin, along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick, we've enjoyed it. We hope you have, too. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Gila River Casino Unlimited Cup has been a production of Diamond P Sports in association with ESPN.